Welcome back to ADT Rugby Chat for another week. Sorry we didn't do it uh, last week. I was tied up with a rather dodgy chicken video, which I apologise to everybody for. Um, but there was a big ADT story on Saturday about um, poaching of rugby players at secondary school level. And it's been a, a topic of conversation for probably two or three years. We did have Ryan Martin from Otago Boys <laughs> on here a few weeks ago. So we thought we'd get talk to some other people about this issue and how big an issue it actually really is. So with me tonight I've got Tracy O'Brien from Kavanagh College, the principal at Kavanagh College, to talk about what's going on at his school. And we've got Gary Conigan here from, who wears two hats, he's the chairman of the New Zealand Secondary Schools Rugby Council, which is a big title, and he's also the deputy principal at, at Kaikoura Valley College. So gentlemen, we'll get underway and it's, we'll talk about some of these issues. So Tracy, we'll start with you. So look, you pulled out of the Highlanders competition at a late, quite a late stage before the competition kicked off. So, just talk me through, just talk us through that for a start. Yeah, it was, look, it was a big call for us. We um, started the year knowing our rugby stocks were pretty slim, particularly in our senior school. Um, we tried to give it every chance to see uh, who'd come back to school. You know, what were our numbers like? Um, what guys we had from last year that had that experience? Uh, probably left it to the um, you know, 11th hour, yeah. maybe one in the morning to do it, but. Uh, in the end, uh, tough call, but we, we made it, um, albeit a little bit late. Um, but as I say, we wanted to give it every chance, give the boys a chance, and, and obviously as a school, we've been in part of the Highlanders, uh, had it for yeah. Qu quite a, yeah, right through, and um, so to, to break from that was, you know, was very hard for the community. So was it? A, it ended up because it ended up with a lot of young, it's sort of, I don't know what, what year it is, fifth formers. Was it fifth form? Yeah, I think um, once once we realised, particularly we had some boys who didn't come back to school from year 12 last year, uh, got jobs, went to Polytech, whatever, they were some of our key boys in, in the scrum, uh, gave us a bit of size, we were having to backfill um, with uh, some younger stocks from boys from last year's under-15s, yep. and coming up to that grade, it just wasn't going to... It was gonna, too hard. It was, it was just too hard, they weren't going to be able to cut it. So Gary, putting your, your Kaikoura Valley hat on, yep. the, Highlander, the Highlander Schools competition... I mean, I think it's been a good thing for the schools. I, I think it gives the, the whole competition more focus. Is it a focus for the co-ed schools to try and make the leap to get into it? Yeah, well, it's unashamedly a competition for our elite players um, and the best players around Otago and, and south, and in fact, in the, in the Highlanders region. Um, there is a place for the co-ed players there. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult for a co-ed school to survive in that competition. Uh, and that's why we've made some uh, some allowances with the with the rules. Uh, some the of the teams have some of the teams have joined into yeah. single units. So South they? Otago, for instance, uh, are hosting players from Catlins Area School, Blue Mountain College, in their team. That's been successful. If you talk to the uh, South Otago people, they'll tell you that's kept schoolboy rugby alive in the region, and and in fact uh, senior rugby as well. And the same thing's happening now in Central Otago. So we've got Mount Aspiring, who have got uh, players coming from. Um, Cromwell School and uh, someone else, Wakatip like High School. So, yeah. uh, coming so across, that, they're playing with so the Wakatip boys. It means that, yeah. that players, that, that pupils can go to a co-ed school and still play in that Highlanders competition. Tracy, do you see it as a like a point of prestige to try and get Kavner back in as a single entity next year, or would you see yourselves? We just want to be a part of it somehow, and would, and would you look at combining with say Kaika Rotari or? Yeah, well, I, I think it's a conversation we've got to continue to have. Um, it would be desirable from our point of view to get back in on our own. Whether that is, uh, we could possibly do it again, is it sustainable? And do we end up in another two, three years' time in the same right. uh, same state and you know, and not being able to maintain that consistency? Do we keep the comp... I'll ask you both. Do, we, do you want to see the competition keep going? I think it's a good competition. It's a good competition. It still needs some tweaking. Right. Mm. So let's talk about the... Okay, let's get on to the, some, of the, some of the other issues. Look, if you look at Cabinet College, over the last probably three or four years, correct me if I'm wrong, but you've lost probably three key young backs out of your team that are now, I think two of those guys are, are, now, are, are now top of the line players in that Otago Boys team. Yeah. Do you think those guys that left your school were poached or was it just a process they wanted to go and be at Otago Boys? Well, at the time, um, you know, there was rumour and scuttlebutt. Um, I don't know at the end of the day how much we could say was there was, uh, you know, is a, is a nod and a wink, is it a tap on the shoulder yep. at the back of a changing room? Yep. How much is it? Um, so I, I really think it's, it's a zero sum game to really go down that path right. now. The fact of the matter is, when you've got uh, some high performing schools like OBs are, they're unashamedly, they've, they've gone for excellence with rugby, it's a big part of their school culture. 
um, there's going to be a lot of pull factors and push factors for kids. Yep. And, um, and we've looked at that, you know, in terms of our own situation, think, well, what can we do to hold our own guys yep. and, and create a rugby environment that they want to stay and be part of? Now, that's a big challenge for us and for yep. any school. Uh, we thought, you know, we could drop another 50 grand into rugby. Is, are we going to get anything out of it? Uh, or do we still have to realise that at some point we're still going to bleed off some players, unfortunately, yep. Yep. and that's the, that's the that's way the it way has to be. Yeah. So, Gary, wearing your um, secondary school's hat, knowing about... I mean, I know that... You, you said in the paper on Saturday, as far as you were aware, there'd been there had been no complaints of poaching in this area. Now that's I'm presu- obviously you've said that's so obviously that's true. Yep. Well, my role in the in the Highlands competition has been to uh, coordinate the dispensation since it started. Right. And uh, to my knowledge, well, there have been no complaints around the dispensations that we've approved. So, so it's not been a challenge to that. Okay. So so the I know that. In, in, in Auckland, it's, it's obviously, a, you're, you're from that background in Auckland, Tracy. So now I know for a fact that um, one of the coaches was found out to, to have been poaching in that market, I think it was last year. Now, he got stood down for two years. So there's obviously a, like, there's obviously a strict protocol here if you get found out. Yeah, if, if a complaint was made and there was found to be substance to it, I think in the first instance it would go to the, uh, the principal's collective and uh, Tracy would be able to, to talk about that, and there might be uh, some sort of admonishment there. If it couldn't be resolved in that forum, then probably it would go to the New Zealand Secondary School Sports Council. Right, and that's, but obviously in Auckland, I think I read somewhere that, that, that the principal's group, is, is that Asher? Asher, yeah. Asher in yeah. Auckland, they got together, yeah. they decided on a penalty for that coach. Yeah. Do you they're... know much about that, Tracy? There was, I'm not sure which school it was. Yeah, oh, only, um, only from a distance. Yeah. Yeah. It had been a little while so since that would, been that would be the process scene. here. So if, if there was a genuine complaint that you felt, well, somebody felt that this wasn't right, the, the, the principals would, would take it up as a group first here. Yeah, and, and often we would, we would um, have some informal talks among ourselves as well. You know, we, we do a lot of work together outside of rugby. And, yep. um, you know, we've got to maintain a, a, a good professional working relationship to get education in the city done and done well. So, you know, we, we've got to see if we can, you know, work, work together on these things as well. Okay. And, you know, talk over a cup of coffee. Or, right, you know, which is, and, and, the, and but you guys are getting on, there's, there's no real, and the, the principals themselves in, the, in this town get on pretty well, do they? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We've got a good partnership, um, you know, formal partnership arrangement. We share a lot of resources and do a lot of things educationally right. together. So, I think from that point of view, that, that that's a good thing. Okay, let, well, let's quickly talk about the, the, the thing that Michael McKenzie raised, the sports coordinator from John McGlash, and that little article that set this all off a week ago, was the whole year 14 thing. And he was going on about why are these kids coming back to uh, coming back in year fourteen. Do, uh, if how many kids? How many year fourteen kids have you got at Cabinet, for example? I've only got one, and uh, she doesn't play rugby. Right. So yeah. So she's back here for for school reasons alone. School school reasons alone. Yeah. Kaikara Valley. Kai, how many year? Oh, fourteen? we'd have one as well. It's, it's not a new. Is that, is that an issue that for you guys? They're coming back just purportedly to play sport. It's not an issue. It's 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 been that way for a long ever time. since I've been involved in rugby. Right. There are probably fewer kids coming back now. Uh, those that do are coming back to, to tweak their NCA to make sure they get the grades they can get to get to university. Right. Yeah, I'd go along so with that. So you're happy with that? Yeah. Look, it's part of it. I mean, it'd be perhaps desirable. I mean, what, one argument is, of course, those kids have had their shot at it yep. and should move on. Yep. I think there's. I've got some sympathy for that, but it's not a new thing, and we've seen it. You know, it's ebbed and flowed. Sometimes you've had one or two. I've been in a school where I've, I've had one or two, and uh, right. but I, I, you'd have to talk to the schools involved. Okay. Of, you know, about well, the that's that's a lot, boys. We better. I better quickly do. I didn't do this last because we didn't do a thing. I um, better get on to my form fifteen. I'll start with the backs. I'm certainly making some changes here. Uh, I've got two new. Well, you wouldn't want to go away from Peter Brent first five. No, well, he's in. He stays in. Um, I'm taking the two wingers out. It's the two two from Southern Chen and Yang. Well, he's in. Pretty average in Southern. They've been losing game after game. Gone. So I'm putting Corey Rapini in from Tyree. He's going pretty well. This wee boy, the pikey boxer from Dunedin. Yeah. Ashton Tuck's going in. I'm putting Kieran Moffat into the midfield. Matt Fattis. Not going that well. So we're putting Kieran Moffat in. Uh, we're going to put Tim Tolliver in from Dunedin because I just like Dunedin. Another players. shark. Another shark. Hamish McBride. Well, he's not playing any good for Queen Island, so he's out. And we're putting in Sean Connor. Liam Evers didn't play last week for Dunedin, so he's out. That's a bit hasty. Yeah, well, I'm going to put Sean Connery in from Kaikarai, since they are uh, still a chance of making the top four. And in the forwards, lads, I'm going to put Aaron Clark in at hooker. I'm dropping the Irishman. Sorry about that, Tracy. The Irishman yeah. goes out Shame. from Harbour. Aaron Clark comes in. John o- Johnny Appleby's coming in for... What am I doing here? I'll put these boys up here. Will Henry's out from Dunedin. 
Oh, and oh, uh, Nick McLennan, he's out from Tyree. They're both gone. I'm putting in Tama Tururangi and he's Craig Miller from Pirate. They're going pretty well. I'm putting Carl Bloxon in for Tom Franklin, who's gone overseas on the booze in, in uh, Las Vegas. I'm putting Carl Bloxon in the team because apparently he stayed on the paddock for the first time this season on the weekend, so that was a big effort. He didn't get sent off. Sam Compton's coming in for Gareth Evans at number eight. Another shark down the Goobler. Another shark down the Goobler. And Johnny Appleby is coming in for Luke Shuler. So another shark down the Goobler there. So that's our team. Boys, we haven't got much time, so we better move on. I'll get you to predict the games coming on this weekend. Um, you guys know a lot about club rugby, of course. So Pirates, Dunedin? Uh, oh, I have to go Dunedin. You go to Dunedin? Sharks easily. I've got some news for you, lads. I don't think the Sharks win this weekend. Too many players out. Well, we'll come back to that. Mm. Alambra Union Harbour? Um, I'll go um, Alambra. Yep. Alambra Union. Union. Yeah, yeah, I think they win that. Green Island Uni? Uh, ooh, I'll go Uni. Uni? University. I go University. And the big game, oh, sorry, is Kaikarai Zingari? Uh, Kaikarai. Kaikarai. Kaikarai on the belt? On the, they're on the belt? Yep. Uh, and the big game, Southern Tyree at Bathgate? Oh, I'll go oh, well, Tyree. Tory. Tory with the other Tory. Right, all right. Thanks very much for that today. Um, we will probably revisit this topic over the next few weeks again. We might get a target boys in for their reply um, over the next few weeks. But right now, in the big game this weekend, Tory, the Eels coming in to play the Magpies. I just think the way Tory are going, they'll put a nail in that southern coffin. I don't think at this stage southern make the four. And we'll talk to you next week.